Gnome is a well-known and popular desktop environment and it's out with a number of new features which we are going to explore in this video. This will be a comprehensive video where I will be covering all the features. If you need a fast one with stellar visuals and animations, check the description for the link or click the i button to access the video. The basic desktop has some new changes. It has this subtle update. Your activity button is now replaced by a pill-shaped button which does the same thing but provides more information in this case. The smaller dots now represent the inactive workspaces while the large dot is the current active workspace. If you switch to a different workspace, the button will reflect accordingly. Notice the name of the current application is no more shown on the shell. It looks a lot more clean. The small menu which showed up in the app name menu is now shifted over here. Next, there are some changes in the control center. Subtle changes which are quite good to have. There's new keyboard backlight control that lets you set the backlight from the control center itself. I'm quite sure GNOME will be improving this design later because currently it has a label but it looks kind of odd. The control center has also received a new shortcut for opening that minimizes mouse movements. The background apps now has a spinner when you close an application from this section. It gives you an idea that your click was received and the app is currently closing itself compared to the previous version where nothing was shown when the app was closing. It's a nice touch added which feels good to have. There's an all new camera indicator which lets you know if your camera is active and is getting used by an application. It lets you know who is doing what and even lets you have more control over your hardware. Now let's start with GNOME Core apps which have got some new updates. Nautilus has a new look with a sidebar that looks more separated from the main view. There's a subtle color change which does this job. This is like a distinctive feature change in GNOME Core apps that reflect across other apps too. You will get to know as we proceed. Nautilus also has a hamburger menu at the side which opens a lot of other options. It is quite handy. File copying or moving now shows up at a different place inside the header bar itself and this is how it looks. You also have this option to change the layout. What's even more interesting is that these changes can be applied to just one particular folder making it folder specific or to the Nautilus UI and make it look the way across different folders. Nautilus has some other core level changes that enhances the overall Nautilus experience, making it even smoother. It feels faster to navigate and search since it has got some more core level optimization Search is further improved with the search everywhere button that searches the entire file system instead of the active directory in the file manager. This is only shown after the search is completed in the current directory. Chrome settings has several new updates in it. Overall, it compacts the entire setup and makes it look more consistent. First thing I noticed was this updated sidebar which matches the Nautilus sidebar look. Like I mentioned, it is going to become a core style of GNOME applications. Inside settings, the privacy tab has several updates. Instead of switching to its own page consisting of its own set of tabs, it shows a single page similar to other pages on the settings app in GNOME. It's a nice touch which brings in more consistency. Moreover, it just reduces the number of in-between clicks to achieve a function or enable a feature. It is more impactful on smaller screens and it's not just the privacy page but a number of other pages like the sharing panel which is made even better with more descriptive options that help and assist the user understand them better along with their functions. Similarly, the users panel now have an information pop-up which shows the relevant info about auto login. These are more targeted in making GNOME a more preferable desktop for beginners such that they don't get lost in the Linux vastness with a huge number of settings and features all cluttered in one place. GNOME settings is now fully navigable with just the keyboard. New navigation capabilities in the search has helped into this transition along with other features like closing several about boxes and pages with the escape key. About page has also got a new update which makes the page look a lot more clean now. This is because of a lot of technical information has been moved to the system details dialog box. Clicking system details open up a small window which contains all technical and OS info in an organized fashion. There is also a copy button embedded inside the header bar that lets you copy this info in a very organized way. 
A new thing I noticed is that the text editor automatically generates a possible title for your file, like in this case. The shell is now made more customizable. They are also now providing ways to show or hide date and time separately. Now we have a seconds option to show the seconds along with the time in case you need it. Several new and modern core apps now replace the previous apps, like the Loop Image Viewer, which is a very modern GTK4 polished alternative to the existing app for GNOME. The Image Viewer looks and feels pretty basic until you discover the GNOME magic, having all those small GNOME-specific features that enhance the user experience, like this one. The Copy button, which lets you copy the picture to your clipboard and paste it anywhere inside an app, like a word processor which I am using here or even inside a Nautilus just by pressing the Ctrl V or by right clicking and then clicking on the paste button in the menu. The basic features are also definitely there. Like I was telling, you can open one image or multiple images in this app. It provides you the basic options for an image viewer like viewing images by switching from one image to the other by using the buttons on the screen or even just by using the arrow keys on the keyboard, which also does the same job. There are the zoom in or zoom out button along with the keyboard shortcuts like Ctrl plus for zoom in and Ctrl minus for zoom out. Hybrid shortcuts like all scroll popular in the apps of the Adobe Suite is also there. There's an info button on the top which calls in the info pane and lets you view information related to the image currently in the show. There is also this hamburger menu on the application header bar, but personally I would prefer it to be aligned at the same place like it is getting done in other applications, so that there is more consistency across different GNOME apps. They can do it just like the copy button, which is present in the left corner, like in the system details page and also in the image viewer. Snapshot is another new core application, which is a very pretty basic camera app. It lets you record videos and take pictures, with a little bit of change that you can do from the preferences page. GNOME software introduces a number of new changes. Flatbacks are now handled more responsibly considering the fact they take up a lot of storage. Now when you try to remove a flatback package or uninstall it from here, you will get an option to remove the associated app data along with the flatback package to help you free up more space. Apps which are unmaintained now have a warning or an indicator letting you know that. There are other features like there's a new indicator which informs you which OS updates now include security fixes, also a notification when downloading system updates. There is added ability to install all requested codecs at once to prevent multimedia issues which are quite prone in some distos. GNOME Map has also received some new updates like the zoom in and out buttons which have moved to become an overlay on the map instead of staying in the header bar. The readout page has some improvements. It now adapts accordingly to fit in small screens. Like for example, when I reduce the screen size, it takes up the entire screen and appears like a different page. And also further, if I reduce it, it adapts accordingly. When I press the back button, it pops like a stack and shows the previous map page. Not a particularly big improvement, but this might be the start of porting maps to become a complete touch friendly application to use. The map does not really look like a very modern GNOME application to fit in. I'm not telling that the user interface looks very ancient. I had also mentioned this in my previous video. It does look a little bit outdated compared to modern GNOME standards and it needs a little bit of revamp now. It is more noticeable when it is put up against some other applications which are very modern like the Nautilus, GNOME settings or even the weather app. Talking about the weather app, there are some new changes. The default window size of the weather app is now bigger and it uses the space on your screen to show more information in a very clean manner. Weather also remembers the size of the window across launches. It means if you resize the window and then restart the app, the window height and width would remain the same. GNOME Console now allows you to change the font in the terminal. This can be accessed from here and changed in any of the mono fonts, since they have better readability in codes and are far better distinguishable from normal plain text. GNOME has updates for its calculator too. Not much, but new currencies are now supported. We have the Nigerian Naira and the Jamaican Dollar added to the list. Plenty of other changes have been implemented like the document scanner which fits well and looks more modern. There's new app styling and behavior for core apps like the text editor, contacts, files, web 
and calendar. Here is the full list. There are six new additions in the GNOME Circle which is also a part of this release. There are some minor issues with this release and they might be a problem if you do kind of online meeting or anything related to the camera because the GNOME software seems not able to identify my camera. And at first I thought it might be related to the system, there might be kind of any system issues with this, but OBS is able to identify my camera, while the other apps related to GNOME like the system UI or the new snapshot is unable to find it. So that might be a problem. If you want to know more about the core level features of GNOME 45, you can watch this video. It comes with a lot of animations making the video all the more engaging. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.